Today's message is, is not focused on as a question to your sincerity. It's not a um, message that's questioning um, your intention or your ethics, but it may sound like that. So again, I ask you as the interpreters, uh, as it comes into your mind and your heart, that you, again, clear your slate so that you don't take this in any um, wrong manner. Um, <clears throat> maybe a better way to say that is, it's not an indictment on anyone individually, it's an indictment on all of us <laughs> in general. And so, uh, and I, my intention is that it, it um, doesn't offer an excuse, but instead offers an explanation to who we are, why we are, and what we can do. So it's not defensive posturing. Um, maybe a better way to say that is it's, it's presented that we could um, posture moving forward in a better way so that we are, are readied for whatever we might undertake. Um, my intent is to, to supply, I'm trying to think how to, to say this, um, to supply and understand. That, that's, that's all it is. So that again, we can see things differently. Um, we're going to read some scripture. None of them, hear me now, none of it's going to be new, but I'm going to shift the spotlight. Normally the spotlight is on um, one individual and we'll get there and you'll understand when we get there. This is just um, in advance of, and I'm going to shift the spotlight from the star of this, of this um, account to the other person. And we are going to um, see that each of us might have that spotlight on us in a, on a daily, uh, daily manner. So I, getting to the, the, the subject, um, remember, it's not, a, it's not an indictment on you individually. It's an indictment on all of us. So I'll say this. Despite us not necessarily being trustworthy, we are still entrusted. Our subject matter today is not just trusted, entrusted. Our theme today is not just trusted, because we're going to let them down. We're entrusted. All of that known. All of that known in advance. And yet, he continues to entrust each of us. We are the carriers of his spirit entrusted, empowered. I was thinking about this message and thinking its, it's purpose is to tell you, you can do this. In spite of your track record, in spite of my track record, we can do this. And if not every time, more times. And then when we get to Monday, I'll say it again, if not every time, more times. And then when we get to Tuesday, I'll stop walking daily, but each day a little bit better. Here's some facts. Failure is certain. Now, may the Lord bless you. God bless you. Thanks for coming out tonight. <laughs> Failure is, hear this, it's certain. Success is possible. Failure certain, success is possible. Failure is normal. Success is extraordinary. Failure is what we do on our own. Success is what we do with the Lord. So there is no discouragement here. This is an encouragement it's an encouragement of how to walk. It's an encouragement of using all that's available. And he has, for some reason, deemed us all on some level worthy of his availability. That's what I want you to remember. The message that we're going to hear later so that we feel, oh, okay, I can do this. We're going to find that he was hand-picked by God. And yet, dot, dot, dot. He was hand-picked by God, and yet he functioned as a human being does. Failure is, without question, 
certain. Success is possible. I always think of the, the scripture before I get to our, our word this morning. I always think of the scripture. All have sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. That's, that's what brings the empowerment of Jesus Christ alive in our lives. When we acknowledge that we are failures without God, we invite him into us, into our lives, into our hearts, into our minds. I don't say that as discouragement. We're built to fail. You've heard me say this so many times. We are created to fail. We are intended through God to succeed. First, first example, and it's just an introduction. So I don't want to, I don't, I hardly want to pause here, but it's a reiteration of what Jesus Christ had heard his father say when we get to our, our theme this morning. Um, Jesus was speaking in the temple at one point. This is John 7, if you want to write that down and, and read that this week. Um, in John 7, Jesus is talking in the temple and, and um, discussing with the leaders, those leaders um, that he called out so many times for being false leaders. He understood their intentions were not pure. He understood their intentions were not to be spiritual leaders. But instead, in a negative connotation, instead, quote unquote, religious leaders doing, pretending to do all that was good and, and not succeeding. So he was calling out their, their hypocrisy at one point because they had called him out for healing on a Sunday, or excuse me, on a Sabbath. He had healed on, on the Sabbath, and they called him out for this. Now, this didn't just, this did not happen in the seventh chapter of John he's recalling when this did happen prior to so he says to them you who have learned from Moses circumcise on the Sabbath yet you called me out for healing and making someone whole on the Sabbath so he's again he's calling out their hypocrisy and uses this statement John 7 24 judge not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment that's a hint to our our scripture scholars where we're headed okay so so um, he is uh, reiterating in some form of what his father had said earlier to someone else i'm in first samuel the third chapter and i'm not staying here long you can go with me but i'm not staying here long this is the moment of entrustment this is the moment that Samuel, little Samuel, a child, was entrusted. Now, I've preached that sermon another time. That's not what this is about today. This is just, again, an introduction to our, our, the scripture we're going to use. At this point, Samuel was um, assisting Eli. Eli was um, the prophet of God. Eli was getting older. He was losing his sight. He needed, uh, if you remember that Paul had Timothy, he needed uh, his Timothy. And Samuel was Eli's Timothy and helping him and, and being with him in, in all that um, he needed physically to do. In this occurrence, this is the moment. This is the time. I should say this is the moments as you'll hear. These are the moments that Samuel connected with the Lord individually, entrusted with God's power, entrusted with God's spirit. And so as, as Samuel had laid himself down, this young boy had been laid down in the, or had laid down in his bed, he heard his name called. And he shouted out to Eli, here, here I am. Here am I, I think is how it says, here am I. No answer from Eli. Called the name again. He went into Eli. Here am I. I. I didn't call you. I don't know. Go back to sleep. I didn't call you. This, by the way, this is my twist on the story. This is not necessarily accurate. You can read uh, the third chapter, the first few verses on your own to, to proofread what I'm saying today. 
And he called him a third time, Samuel. Here am I. He went into Eli, here am I. I don't think you're hearing clearly, said Eli. I think the Lord is calling you. I think the voice you're hearing is not my voice. It's the Lord. Next time, answer the Lord. The Lord goes on to tell him. The Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, behold, listen to this. Listen to this, the power of this calling. And listen to the last word in this verse. Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth shall tingle. That's a calling. Let me tell you something. That's a calling. And so our, our spotlight is going to be shifted in the next chapter from the star in waiting to Samuel. So I'm going to steal the story by way of a, the spotlight. I don't know if you've seen live on, on stage, uh, but I want you to see this as a live play. And how this spotlight should be, it would follow these brothers in. Each one of these brothers would have their spotlight moment until all the spotlights hit the one brother who comes in. But our spotlight is going to remain the entire time on Samuel, fixed on Samuel, entrusted. Watch this now, but not necessarily trustworthy. Each of us. Story being told the way it's being told so that you understand your dependency on God. Even though you've been entrusted with his spirit, even though you've been entrusted with your calling, even though you've been entrusted with what you know is God's purpose, it doesn't mean we're always focused on that. And so we let him down. And I want you to be more in tune to your calling today. I want you to be more in tune to his spirit within you, giving in to that. Because when we don't, we fail. When we do, we succeed. Man is built to fail so that when we succeed, all honor and glory to God. Again, our message today is simple, very simple. Not just trusted, entrusted. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. Those are our power verses this morning. For me, it's one of my favorite stories, accounts. So that no one thinks story is fiction and everyone understands account is uh, nonfiction and real. It's one of my favorite stories, nonetheless. First Samuel 16. And the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Saul had lost his way and it's time to replace Saul. And he was saying to Samuel, we got to go on. Jesus Christ said later, when talking about sharing the message with others, knock the dust off your feet and move to the next house. In essence, God is saying, knock the dust off your feet and move to the next calling. Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. By the way, if you go back and read 3 Samuel, you'll also see the Lord's um, firmness with Eli. Because Eli had misstepped, and that story goes on. It wasn't appropriate or fitting to today's message. But if you read that third chapter, you'll see that the Lord empowers Samuel to correct Eli for, for what he had done earlier. It's, it's really great. So we're doing it again. Move on from Samuel. It, 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 or excuse me. Move on from Saul. We're moving to next. Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse. For I have provided me a king among his sons. Your job, should you accept it, Mr. Phelps, is to identify the son. He, he accepts it. He fills the horn with oil to go and anoint whomever this is. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he'll kill me. And I'm not going to go on, but it's, a, it's really a great exchange between God and, and Samuel, how he tells him to, to take a heifer and you're going to sacrifice this. And that's the reason for going to Jesse. I'll cover you. We'll give you, we'll give you a reason to go there and everything else will ha happen. Wink, wink, spontaneously. So you're safe. So off goes Samuel with his oil and his heifer. 
and, and taking his heifer. Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the town trembled at his coming. Samuel's reputation went first. If he's in town, this could be bad news. So the elders shook when he came into town. Comest thou peaceably, they asked. And I would love to have heard those voices. It wasn't as, as bold as I'm just saying. I'm thinking they're cowering. <laughs> Do you come in peace? And he said peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Remember the heifer story? Um, sanctify thy, yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. All of this one sentence clips takes hours. Understand there was lots going on this day. All of this, not to mask, because this was a beautiful thing that was being shared in this moment, but this wasn't why he was going to Jesse. Remember this. I will give you purpose to go to sanctify those in Bethlehem, but your real purpose is to identify the king of Israel. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. It came to pass when they were come, he looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. So in my mind, Brad Pitt just walked in. And he looks at this handsome man, this tall, handsome man, striking, everything going for him. Got to be the guy. Because he was seen, Samuel was seen, like I see. It's got to be the guy. That's my star quarterback right there. That's the guy I'm putting the oil on. And God said, no, that's the one I refused him. He's not the one. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Remember that Jesus said something similar. Then Jesse called Abinadab and asked him to pass before Samuel. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord hath not chosen these. Now, we're reading that in two verses. Think of this parade. Think of the time, think of the stress. If any of you have ever gone for an interview, I want you to picture this interview. Am I the one? Make sure I'm all, okay, I think I've got my robe straight, got my hair done. I got, I got my hair cut last night. I heard Samuel was coming in. I even got my hair cropped, shaved my beard, and I walk out and I get the news. Keep walking, <laughs> go ahead, keep walking. Not him yet. So I want you to picture the whole thing. Now that's them walking in front. Remember where our spotlight is. Our spotlight is on he who was entrusted with God's spirit. Our spotlight is on Samuel, not on any of the seven sons, and certainly not on the eighth son, which is usually where that spotlight shines. It's on he who was entrusted. I hope you understand this. The spotlight is on you. The reason I've shifted the spotlight to, uh, to Samuel is because I'm shifting the spotlight to you. You who have been entrusted. That you walk more trustworthy going forward. Eli's failure was just normal. It's just, it's normal. As I said earlier, failure is normal. Success is extraordinary. This was a teaching moment for Samuel. We are in the throes of, uh, on uh, the football team, we are in the throes of seven-on-seven -seven tournaments. That's where you go out and you play at a, this frantic pace. Teams go back and forth, um, trying everything, trying new players. Nothing counts. None of this is win or loss. And we have to continue to tell ourselves this is just to learn. That's all. So while this is moment in Samuel's life, this moment in Jesse's life, this moment in the eighth son's life is so critical. It's also a learning experience for he that we have the spotlight on, for Samuel. 
He's learning to be used of God in this moment. He's giving in to his, what he sees with his eyes, to what he knows seems to be the best in class. And God is saying, that's not the one. I hear your thoughts. I understand why, but that's not the one. Samuel said unto Jesse, are, there, are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. Behold, he keeps the sheep. He's not just the youngest, he's the least. He's doing the grunt work for me. He didn't get his hair cut. He didn't shave his beard. In fact, he doesn't even have a beard. He's not even old enough to have a good beard. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he comes hither. And Jesse sent and brought him in. The word says this, speaking of David. Now he was ruddy and without of a beautiful countenance nor goodly to look at. There was no Brad Pitt in him at all. He was never mistaken for a George Clooney. He was the character. He was the off-character player in this. He didn't fit. He was young. He was the, the last child. And he was the one that was completely disregarded, even by his father in this moment. He presented... Picture this now. He presented the other sons knowing, I'm not even going to call David in. We'll never need him. I don't really need my other six. I think this first one's going to capture his eye. This is the one. He's always been the leader of my sons. Refuse, 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 refuse. Is there any left? Yeah, well, there's, there's a shepherd. He smells like the sheep. He's dirty like the sheep. He's He has no leadership at all. He... He walks sheep. And not goodly to look at. And the Lord said, arise, says this to Samuel, arise, anoint him. Listen to this. For this is he. Entrusted. Samuel, entrusted, is about to work for the Lord, to entrust in David. The calling as king of Israel, the shepherd boy. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Rome. He did his job. Not necessarily trustworthy throughout. He was leading with his eyes. He was, he was moving on emotion. He was moving on who he thought. And God had to keep telling him, I've refused him. Keep that oil down. Don't move yet. Kept, kept, I'm sure he kept leaning in. This is the one that I thought that one was the better one. But I can see this one can too. I can see this one can too. None of them. Until they had to go and get David. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you. Samuel, who was entrusted, we, we went to 1 Samuel 3. We remember when he was entrusted with God's spirit, right? You're going to tingle when you, when you hear his message. Now we're at the point where he didn't quite necessarily succeed completely in this calling, though he did. Don't, don't miss this. But he stumbled. Now he entrusts David. And the word says this. The spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. How did David do with that spirit? We're not just two concubines in. We're hundreds in. Hundreds of mistakes. Hundreds of mistakes while walking with that spirit of the Lord. I don't even want to go to the Bathsheba story and Uriah, what he did to Bathsheba's husband to get him out of the way so that he could fulfill his lust for this woman. David stumbled and bumbled along the way. Entrusted, not just trusted. Because he, he didn't walk circumspect at all times. He didn't walk as he was called to walk. You stumble too. I stumble too. That doesn't mean we give up. On a very, very small scale, we start our meeting asking for who needs prayer. 
And those reports sometimes come very discouraged because in that moment, we're feeling overwhelmed. And we pray. And then we hear a report like Brother Jim gave this morning. Not just the words he spoke, but how he spoke those words. When we work with God, success is extraordinary. Extraordinary. When we're left to see with our own eyes, my situation is so discouraging. My situation, there's no hope for. I'm struggling just to pray to get through this situation. My eyes are telling me this situation is dire. God says, I don't look on those things. I go deeper. Use me, he's saying, use me. I've entrusted you with all that you need. Why are you not going to that first? That's our message today. That you understand that you have all that you need. Just trust him. He who has entrusted us, who are unworthy. Again, not specific to anyone individually. We're all the same. All have come short. He has entrusted us. He has trusted us. Why wouldn't we trust him who is perfect? Him who is defined as love. God is love. Doug is not. So why wouldn't I trust the source? If he can trust me, who is not trustworthy, why would I not trust him who is? Today, the message is simple. You have everything you need. I always flash, sorry for the corniness, I always flash to Dorothy. Sitting, watching the balloon fly away in the Wizard of Oz. And she's lost in that moment. How will I ever get back to Kansas? Oh, Dorothy, says Glenda. Sorry, I won't go along with my invitation. You've always had everything you need. Just click your heels. Just kneel down. Just pray. You've always had. You, saints of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've always had everything you need. Why allow yourselves even a moment of discouragement? And now the counselor in me will step aside and say, but I understand. Of course I understand. I understand how you can get taken down by what you see. I understand how Samuel can see this handsome young man come in and say, that's the guy. I can see, I wish we had, I wish we had the account of when David came in. Maybe dragging his staff, maybe he's tired at the end of the day. Who knows what he looked like, what he smelled like, who knows any of that? Wonder what Samuel thought when he came in. Him? You sure you got the right brother? Who's behind him? Who's, who's, there's got to be another brother coming in. That's us. Entrusted with his spirit. And when we don't use it, we flounder. I am encouraging you to use the Holy Spirit that you have. Jesus Christ said over and over to his, his disciples, I have to go. I have to be crucified. I have to. Else you're going to be out here without anything. If I don't, if I don't leave this earth, if I don't go the way my father has scheduled my death, you won't be left with my spirit. You have to receive that which will carry you to the next level. First thing he did. First thing he did, first thing he did when he resurrected, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Everything changes in this moment. The denier became the president of the church, if you will. Peter, who was so weak, he, he hid and cursed and denied so that he wouldn't get taken down, then stood on the day of Pentecost and took them all down in the spirit. That's what we have available. You've been entrusted. 
want you to receive your calling. I want you to receive your responsibility. I want you to receive your ministry and tell others. Congratulations to all of you who have found your salvation. Now give that to others. You were not placed on this earth just to find salvation, but that's a great thing. And I'm so thankful that we all have, but there's people dying daily without Jesus Christ. You're called to help those people find Jesus Christ. Entrusted. Might we all be just a little more trustworthy going forward? I have no questions to his decisions. When he called Samuel three different times and Samuel still didn't know who was calling. That's us. That's us. We do that daily. He prompts us and maybe our temptation is me. You said me? You want me to reach out to that person? I, I'm the least of your people. We've been entrusted. Be trustworthy. When he calls your name, say just as Samuel said, but be ready with your answer. Here am I, Lord. Use me. May the Lord bless each one of you.